Yeah, good morning. Good morning, everybody. You're welcome to the discourse with Jimmy Disu. And of course, this is brought to you by MTN. Right. Um, the first of all, I'd like to dedicate today's program to a very, you know, an old elderly friend of mine who had been on my program when I was airing it on Classic FM. Um, he's a medical scientist. Uh, his name is Jide Shomade. And he died uh, about two days ago um, at the age of uh, 74 under on, on circumstances that are yet to be um, fully determined, uh, announced, and so on and so forth. So I dedicate this program to him. I called him Uncle Jide. Uncle Jide would always put a call through to me um, about issues, issues discussed and so on. He was very, very passionate about Nigeria. He'd been in America for only God knows how many years and then came home to contribute, you know, his own quota, as it were, and then death nabbed him. I mean, Uncle Dide, so rest in peace. Um, the Also today, there's a younger friend of mine, you know, you have old friends and young friends, there's a younger friend of mine who I suspect is in his 40s today, is a regular contributor to this program, he's always uh, here. Uh, he's forever buying me a book or something, and I'd like to wish him a happy birthday, or some wedding. Now, who is my guest today? Um, I want you, first of all, to listen to this voice note. When you listen to this voice note, it will, you will say, ah, no wonder I brought him to discuss Nigeria. The, what we are going to discuss, like I said, is my country. I'm going to discuss it with him. So we are going to have a very highly intellectual uh, uh, discussion. He's somebody I, since I got his voice note, you know, I've been awed by him. Uh, he, uh, he's a poet. Uh, but even then, the, the passion with which he delivers his messages, um, you know, they're quite, quite very, very impressive. And of course, it comes from a stock that all of us know. I, I will hold that first, but I want you to sit back and listen to this voice note, and then we'll come back and start the program. This is The Voice Note on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. It was why we sang and danced in the night, why we lit fires that burn through the night, why we chose a flag colored in freedom, for now we would be kings in this our kingdom. <laughs> but our first head of state was Igbo, and the next, though a soldier, also Igbo. Then Angus ruled, followed by Alsa, and then came the turn of Yoruba. Then Alsa came back for a term cut short, when power was taken by an Alsa gone short. Then Gwari claimed his turn to rule, but a mandate stolen was was his downfall. Then Kanuri came and it's quite probable that he'll still be ruling if not for that apple. Then Yoruba returned not once but twice. Then Alsa returned but died in peace. Then it left us a while to worry and wonder when it was over. Ijo had power and after him came that titanic shift and now we can see that Alsa is back leaving me with this troublesome thought. Where in all this is my own president? For where I was born is not where I'm from, and where I'm from is not my home. So when the tribes gather, I often wonder, who will I fight when you're both my brothers? Nobody asked when we were children. Before we play, are you a Muslim? We shared a space that nobody claimed, but now you ask me to choose a side. When we were students, nobody asked if North and South could share a desk, if East and West could study together, but now you tell me that I'm a stranger. Stranger, yes, to these ways of thinking. Thinking that tribe is everything. The Niger and Benue, they meet in my hand. I'm not an indigen, but this is my land. And this is my language, I speak nothing else. My home is here, I know nothing else. My tribe is my nation, I am nothing else, and this is my country, I have nowhere else. And so, though people are quick to assure me, to tell me this country I live in is free, deep in my heart, I know that freedom, my freedom, is yet to come. When no one will question my origin, when no one will call me a non-indigen, when no one will kill me because of my faith, when no one will cheat me because of my state, when my state will be wherever I live, and will change whenever I choose to move, the day I find, not a Nigerian president, but that a Nigerian is finally president. And so, while the flag of ethnicity still flutters over this land of two shining rivers, and the tribes take their turn to misgovern my country, I look to the future, for I'm not yet free. The Discourse with Jimmy Disu. The Discourse with Jimmy Disu. Continues in a moment. Mistakes 
two o'clock in the morning, getting set for another day. Another chance to change my story. I believe in my hustle. I know be lazy, but But I feel just stay that we must move. If it don't close, I go find another. If I fall down, I go try to cover. Hey, oh, hey, oh. Whatever life brings, we move. Turn up your dreams. MTN, everywhere you go. So they and now they don't break the padlock come out. Open big gates, make you feel join MTN. You bungay yellow family. We get network for Niger where no they for hand. Just walk out, enter any MTN store where they don't sell it. Buy your tier over MTN scene. Make yourself turn up better, better, airtime and data woof on top the yellow network. Oh yeah, kia kia wrong go by your MTN sim today. Oh. Visit mtnonline.com forward slash sim to touch like this store where then they sell sim near you. Everywhere you go, MTN. <laughs> You know as body they tutorial you anytime you they download and watch plenty videos. Like say tomorrow not day. That's so one corner of your brain go they tell you say eh. <laughs> I see they sweet you so. <laughs> Make you remember say now your pocket go here amo. <laughs> my brother, my sister. The truth be say that one now before before. Now when you buy data with the last with skinny money on top MTN, you go jollificate 10 gigabyte data for 3,000 naira and 20 gigabyte data for 5,000 naira. Plus say they go cost sama you 4 gigabyte a hoof data for take watch YouTube videos for the data network with the reliable shikina just dial star 131 hash for take turn up your old bonga data for shikini money on top mtn terms and conditions day everywhere you go mtn and now we are back on the discourse with jimmy disson <laughs> Yeah, you welcome back to the discourse with Jimmy Disu brought to you by MTN. And uh, the beautiful voice you heard just now and that very nice uh, poem um, was the voice of Dike Chukumerije, who, who is, in, is in Abuja. We're, so we're speaking via Skype and things. Uh, we're on Facebook and um, YouTube, uh, but if, if, you see, if you see fluctuations in the, in the process, then you know that, of course, these are, these are uh, network issues. Good morning, DK. Good morning, sir. It's a pleasure to be on your uh, it, It's a bigger pleasure for me. Uh, but I'm always bowled over by by any form of intellectual uh, exhibition, and you know, and that piece that they had was beautiful. In fact, it was on hearing it that I told my Oga here, Ago, uh, to get in touch with you. It's a big pleasure talking to you. Now, one of the pleasures, one of the pleasures of being the uh, of coming from famous origins is that people will always, when there's a public discussion, will first of all go back to your origins, and in this case, of course, we'll go back to your dad. Uh, you, you can't run away. You can't run away from that. He made his impact, a very great impact in this country, and uh, may his uh, blessed soul rest in peace. Um, mm. Did he have any influence on you um, in be either becoming a poet or what I would call? A, a patriotic Nigerian. Did he have any? Did you have any um, strong input in you on that? Yes, he, he had a lot of influence on me. Uh, in that, I, you know, uh, my dad started out as a journalist. Yes, uh, he used to publish a magazine in the seventies, known as Afriscope. Yes, uh, a very pan, pan Africanist magazine. Uh, and I grew up, uh, you know, I grew up in that environment, uh, surrounded by uh, current affairs, current issues, uh, looking at issues from a, a pan-Africanist perspective, mm. uh, being very conscious about, you know, our role, our responsibility to the, to the black race, to the African continent. And then we also had, uh, he was a very, uh, a father in the mold of traditional fathers, 
you know, they don't show lots of emotion or things like that. Mm. So you know, there wasn't a lot of chit chat that used to go on in the house. But then once in a while, he would just sit you down and, and talk to you, you know, as in, you know, he always felt that, look, whatever you do in life, and you must contribute something positive to your community. There's not enough to marry and raise children, and that is not enough. And that's just normal. You have to contribute positively to your community. Mm. You know, so in that sense, he had a lot of he he really uh, raised us all to have a social conscience and to really think about what is your com- what is your contribution to your community, particularly in the context of Pan Africanism. Mm. Yeah, okay, that's 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 fine. Um, may his soul rest in peace. Let me let you carve out your own identity before I get sucked into talking about about, about him. Um, so the the you you are a poet by is it is it a hobby or you are a poet by by profession? It's it's that it's a hobby. Let's put it that way. It started out as a hobby. I didn't study poetry. I didn't study literature. You didn't I read, really? No, I read, I read law in school. Ah, uh, look at we are opposite. Poetry. <laughs> I see. So and then you veered into our own into our own area. I mean, I I studied all the arts and I still can't write the line of poetry. So <laughs> I was like having a big big laugh, big laugh here. Now, what are your feelings about you know your country Nigeria? What are your deep feelings? What are the things that you think of anytime you think of your country? I think of its uh, potential. I always see, first of all, the potential that we have uh, as a nation, uh, Nigeria. Uh, Unlike uh, a lot of people, I don't think uh, that we are an accident. I think that we are quite uh, providential uh, to have this collection of very talented uh, human beings all together in one country. Mm. Uh, with its size, its population, its geography, its resources. So I see the potential and it motivates me a lot. You know, I'm also very cognizant. I I was born here, I grew up here, I did all my schooling here. Yes. Of its problems and its challenges, the politics, the the tribal, ethnic rivalry, religious uh, bigotry. I see all those challenges, but I'm always more motivated by the promise, the potential of what Nigeria can be if we get our act together. I don't mm. think that there is any other nation uh, on the face of the earth, any other black nation on the face of the earth that has the potential that Nigeria has to change the profile, the brand, the reputation of people of color, of black people, of African people all over the world. I think Nigeria can have the same impact that China had on Southeast Asia, that really if Nigeria stands up, Africa will stand up, you know, that we have that potential. So I always see that every time I look at my country and I've traveled the length and breadth of the country. I'm from the Southeast, but I was born in Lagos. I grew up in Lagos. I did my university in Abuja. You know, I did my law school in Enugu. Uh, been to Medukuri. I've gone all over the country. and Everywhere I go, I see the potential that we have, particularly in our diversity, the potential that it gives us as a country. Mm. But but you said that you are from the southeast. Do you think uh, this country has been fair to the people of the southeast? Um, of course, you're quite aware of the various agitations that are going on. One doesn't, doesn't need to state that. So I, I wonder if, if, because you're a Nigerian, yes, but it also doesn't take away the fact that you are from the southeast. Uh, and uh, there's always a constant reminder in Nigeria where, where anybody comes from. So I wonder if you... If, if you feel and uh, uh, some of the agitations of the people of the southeast, if you know, if you are aligned with them, I definitely feel all the agitations of people from the southeast, and we have a very clear case. There are issues that we have with the Nigerian states. There are issues of marginalization. There are issues of uh, lack of representation. You know, there are issues of insensitivity to some of the uh, core needs and core uh, desires and aspirations of the Southeast. So I'm very much aligned with the grievances in the region. Yes. Uh, like many other parts of Nigeria. Uh, the, the Nigerian state today is, is, not, is, not, is not, you know, many people always think that Nigeria is this, what we're seeing now is not one Nigeria. What we're seeing now is 
What we're seeing now is a very predatory state. It's a post-colonial state, a state that still preys on its people. So there are injustices and grievances everywhere. Mm. And I'm very much aligned with the woman from the Southeast. You know, the, my only, the only difference is that I don't, I don't believe in secession. I don't believe, in, I don't believe that that's the way to solve our problems. Mm. I believe that we need to engage with the Nigerian states. That we, can't, that we have to go through Nigeria. We have to deal with Nigeria to find our freedom. That's the only difference. Mm. But I agree with all the grievances on ground. I align with all the grievances on ground. Mm. Uh, okay, so you don't believe in, in secession. That that conflicts your dad's position You know, during the Civil War. He was, I think, a spokesperson for uh, Biafra at that time. But then your dad's life is his and yours is yours. I mean, so <laughs> I just wanted to chip that in. Uh, because people will be wondering. Yeah, even, at, even at that time, my dad was the director of propaganda in Biafra. Yes. But the Biafra of 1967 to 1970 is different from the Biafra agitation of today. Hmm. The Biafra of 1967 to 1970 was, it was in self-defense. We were attacked. There was, yes. there was very little that anybody could do. My dad was in Lagos at the hmm. time that the unrest began and he fled Lagos because he was attacked. They were going to kill him and wow. run back. So Igbo people fought out of self-defense to, to survive because we're under attack. So it's very different from the realities today where it is not a particular specific directed attack against only Igbo people. The Nigerian state is by character, it has become predatory and it is pre and it is preying on everybody. The poverty, the insecurity is everywhere. It's not just targeted at one ethnic group. Yes. And that is why we can the only way we can tackle it is also by pulling together. So the state is united in its oppression, in its in its uh, in its infliction of poverty on society, but society is divided in its response to that predatory state, and that's the problem. Hmm. You know, so there's no there's no inconsistency. My dad was in Biafra in 1957 to save his life and to protect his people because we're attacked. Hmm. You know, but that that same man also came back to Nigeria and integrated fully into Nigeria. Yes. So that struggle of 67 is different from the, the agitations going on today. There is a huge difference. Hmm. Uh, when we talk about the struggle, what about the the intended map of Biafra? Do you think there's any difference between the map of Biafra during the Civil War and the Biafra that uh, uh, some agitators want in terms of the map? And the, it, you know, uh, there's politics in that. That's why I'm, you know, throwing you under the bus on this one. <laughs> the map of, I mean, there is there <laughs> Biafra. Uh, ideally, is a yeah. multi-ethnic, multicultural. States. That's that's the ideal, okay. and, and, and let me just say that I am somebody that believes I am I believe in the multicultural states. I don't believe in mono ethnic states. I don't believe yes. that that's the way forward. I believe that the way forward is multicultural states where people learn to live together across ethnic lines. And the original Biafra was a multicultural state. Yes, you know. I agree uh, today, I think the agitation is also for the multicultural state. Is also for a multicultural state. But there has been a tendency to reduce it to an Igbo only struggle or to reduce it to a state that is dominated by the Igbo ethnic group. And I don't think that that would be a healthy state. Mm. As there is no, I don't think it's healthy for a state to be dominated by an, an ethnic group. I think it's important to build multicultural civic states where every ethnicity, majority, and minority has a, a strong stake in that society. So mm. the majority may have its way, but the fundamental rights and dignity of the minority must always be protected. Yes. You know, so it is important to conceptualize the state as a multicultural one that is fair to every interest group that is in that state. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, um, um, quite interesting. But usually uh, the, the rhetoric that you hear, um, you know, from in areas of this always go back again to the elite and the leadership. Uh, the, the people are usually excused from this anomaly. I, I wonder how you feel about that. I, 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 I agree that, like Chino Achebe said, that the problem with Nigeria is leadership, leadership, leadership. You know, it's about the quality of uh, leadership that, that is provided from the top. 
Mm. Uh, so I don't, I, I align with that point of view that our elites exploit the existence of ethno-religious differences in, in the populace. They exploit it for their own personal power games to preserve themselves in office, to perpetrate themselves in office. Mm. I, I, I feel that Nigeria requires visionary leadership. Mm. That rather than simply pandering to the ethno-religious sentiments of people, tries to point an alternative future, raise the, you know, raise the uh, bar for people, show them a vision of what we can be. Our ethnic differences will never disappear. They yes. will never disappear. We'll always be Igbo, Yoruba, or whatever it is. It will always be there. But we don't have to be the same to live in a functional society. We don't have to all come from the ethnic group to have the same ethnic group to have good roads, functional hospitals, good schools, you know, things like that. We, our differences are not the reason why there are potholes on our road, why you cannot travel from, I live in Abuja, why you cannot go from Abuja to Kaduna without fear of kidnap. Yeah. It's not our ethnic differences that causes that. It's incompetent in office, regardless of where you come from, there is a common culture of substandard governance all over mm. the country. Yeah. And that's what needs to be tackled. We need to demand more from our leaders. Mm. But but part of the part of what worries me um, as I you know move closer to you know the age. I think I think I what what are we allowed three three score and ten? I'm just about four years away from then, and then I know that mm -hmm. anything after that is over time. But what bothers me is that you see the lack of youth involvement uh, in governance. Um, you, you very very intelligent, honest to God. If, don't let me say it now because if it goes shock you, if you put yourself up for election, I'd be the first to vote for you. Your thoughts are very clear, you know. You're very, but you do find that the youth seems seem to have been bound to the Philistines, um, the same old forty doddies. Uh, uh, people, I, I people, for example, that I knew when I was in university about forty years ago, are still the same persons, the same faces that we see. How would you, what would you be saying to the youth, um, you know, to get them more involved uh, properly, not just being aides and essays and whatever, but more involved in the polity? Uh, 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 because look look at it, one of the things that bothers me, for example, is the debt profile of our country. Uh, the debt profile, it frightens me. I don't care what the economy says, with that kind of debt hanging on our neck, uh, I, I don't think any one of us should be sleeping with our two eyes closed. But we don't find the youth asking questions, for example, saying that, look, these debts that you are piling up, no matter how good they sound, whether it's for infrastructural development or not, it's our own generation that's going to pay. Some of these debts come with moratoriums. You know, they give a moratorium five years, ten years, and you start paying in ten years' time. In ten years' time, most of the, most of the people in the corridors of power, whether they like it or not, Will, will be will be pushed aside, but you don't find those questions being asked. You don't find you seem seem to have been defeated in their minds. They seem to be, and that only what you just see is a privileged few, the son of this and the cousin of that. But generally, you seem to be contented with being essays and carrying bags and so on and so forth. Does that bother you? It does, sir. Uh, it bothers me uh, very much. Uh, the state of things uh, around me, particularly with younger people. Yeah. Um, not so much that they're not bothered. It's just that I feel there's a lot of anger and frustration uh, amongst, with young people. Uh, yes. But I feel a lot of work is channeled uh, in directions that may not be very helpful. Yes. You know, maybe either towards violence or towards just violent agitation without very clear... Uh, policy outcomes or policy objectives. Mm. And there is anger, but there is not enough. This, this, with this, a problem like Nigeria, you have to be angry, but you also have to be very cold and calculated. Yeah, you know, you also have to, you, you also have to have a, a certain level of level-headed just to see clearly what the solution is. There's no room for sentiment or emotion in this thing. Hmm. So I just feel like there's a lot of energy with young people, but then it's not being channeled in the right direction. So for instance, this disengagement with the electoral uh, system, I think is very unhealthy. 
I think that there are only two ways forward. Is either you're going to change Nigeria using violence, which mm. I don't advocate for, because yes. it will degenerate to chaos. But is either you're going to change Nigeria using violence, or you're going to change Nigeria by engaging consistently, systematically, and very intelligently with the political system yes. through the ballot box. And it is, and I feel that the ballot box option is still a very viable one. The current president was elected with 15 million votes hmm. in a country of 200 million. Hmm. It means that it, about 60, 70 million people are just not voting, are not engaging at all. And that hmm. is what is making it possible for certain situations to continue. Apart from that, every year, at least 5, 6 million Nigerians turn 18. Yes. So every year, within two, three years, you have a completely fresh bunch of electorates that can elect a president. Yeah. But nobody is really engaging with these new 18-year-olds, new 19-year-olds, to conscientize them, to let them realize that, look, the ballot box is the way forward. Mm. So it's, it's a struggle. It's one of the reasons why I am doing what I'm doing. I may just be one person, but I think that there is a need for a lot of orientation. Too many people have just given up entirely on the Nigerian project and just want everything to crash and scatter. Yes. But I feel that that takes us all backwards by many, many generations. It's very easy to compare Nigeria as it is today, the worst of Nigeria, hmm. with some fantasy country in your head. You're comparing the worst of Nigeria with the best of a fantasy. Nigeria will always come out the loser. But that is not reality. The reality is that we have to engage with what we have now. From here, we have to take a step forward. Mm. So it's important to give people a reason to engage with the project as it is. It may not be perfect, but we have to engage with it. Everybody talks about, oh, America, oh, America. America is not a perfect country. They have yeah. been amending, they've amended their constitution so many. Over time, they have evolved. They started from a very misogynist, you know, racist, tribalistic, society with a constitution written by 13 white men and mm. they have evolved to where the countries evolve india evolved singapore malaysia we all evolve nigeria is a difficult country 200 million people over 500 languages over 250 ethnic groups it's complex yes but we are still here and we have we have a shot we still have a shot at this glorious future but we have to engage politically that's my own point of view okay that, uh, that, that, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, whilst we talk, thinking of your own point of view, I got a bill to pay. So we are going to take a short. We are going to take a short break. <laughs> okay. And uh, when we come back, we'll open up our lines: zero seven hundred nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three, and zero one four six five seven one nine zero. I've been talking to DK Chukumerije, very brilliant Nigerian who caught my fancy. And DK, we'll be calling you from time to time on issues, okay? I hope you'll always oblige us. No problem, sir. Now, no I'm, going to, I'm going to be your friend by force, by force, by fire. <laughs> You're already we'll, my friend, sir. Uh, all right. You're we'll, a friend. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll be right back. With Jimmy Disson. Continues in a moment. Mommy, when is Aunt Valerie coming again? So you can seize her phone again, Abby. Watching cartoons on her phone is so cool. But yours is... Yes. So slow. Watching cartoons on your phone drags like Ogbono soup. When kids complain about the speed of your internet, you know it's time to switch to MTN 4G. Upgrade to MTN 4G now and enjoy free 4 gigabyte data plus 100% bonus on every recharge for three months. Text 4G to 131 to check and turn up your internet experience on the Reliable Data Network. Everywhere you go, MTN. Six o'clock in the morning, getting set for another day. Another chance to change my story. I believe in my hustle. I know be lazy, pesino. But life is just a not me, bus if it all close, I go find another. If I fall down, I go try to recover. Hey -oh, hey -oh. Hey -oh, hey -oh, hey -oh. If it ever walk me, I know they bother. Cause I believe, say, I go show the cross 
Whatever life brings, we move. Turn up your dreams. MTN, everywhere you go. And now, we are back on the discourse with Jimmy Disson. Yeah, you're welcome back to the discourse with Jimmy Disu, and I've been having a very, very interesting discussion with my, who, who I now consider my very good friend, D.K. Chukumeride. I'm going to take one or two calls. Let's follow the rules, please. Let's call from a quiet background, and, and please, let's mind our language. Let's just enjoy a highly intellectual discussion this Saturday morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Oh, we lost that one. Let's try another one. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Morning, my friend. Who's calling? Yeah, this is Mr. Batlami, sir. Calling Be from Badagri, sir. Yes, sir, from Badagri. Please go on. Yes, sir. I love your program. I love you, sir. Please. I love me. Love me, Agape, not, uh, <laughs> sir, please, I really want not a risky number. love. <laughs> okay, go on. Sir, I'm happy to hear from you, sir. I really want to have your numbers. I want to speak with you, sir. After this program, please. Ah, no, I don't, I don't do private chats, please. Uh, this, this, this job, let me, let me explain so you won't think that I'm arrogant. This job, okay. this job, it consumes you, okay? It takes up so much in you. And if I were to attend to every single caller after that program, I won't have a life of my own. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, hopefully one day we'll meet inside bus on the, you know, on the corridor somewhere. Then we can have a discussion. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Morning, madam. How are you? Good morning, Mr. Sue. Yes, morning, ma. Who's calling? My name is Adania. Yes, ma. I love, I don't know if I love Mr. DK or his work. Yes. He's, I don't know. He's just too intellectual. Yes, he is. I like the mindset and I like the fact that he's chosen to fight this war yes. without a gun. Yes. Intellectually. And we need more youth. We need our people to think like that. Yes. We need their friends. We need a lot. I, I wish I could join his crusade. Yeah. But I think I'm too old to do that. Yeah, it's not, you're never too old to do. You're never too old to... Oh, really? Yes. Okay, I'll just listen in and wait to hear, get the contact. I've seen his email address. But yes, you can get in touch with him. I think we all need to join him. Thank, Thank you, you very Mr. Much. This, is, this is for bringing me. Thank you. I'm always so happy when you guys read this poem. It's so inspiring for me. Yes, we'll, we'll read it at the end of the program one more time oh, for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chukumeri. God bless you. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, can we thank get... Thank you. Me? Yes. Uh, hello, good morning. Oh, we lost that one. Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello? Uh, okay, that's one more time. Oh. Hello? Hello, good morning. I could this Morning, sir. You. Morning. God bless your guest, um, Chico Marije Dickie. God bless yes. you, too. Yeah. Intellectual discourse. Very, very intellectual discourse, which I'm proud of. But there's something. I also want to make two points, two reference points. Nigerian youth of today, why they're not contributing, is that most of Nigerian youth have been, I don't know, brainwashed by fake foreign media, hmm. which is representing who they are. Hmm. The leader of today is supposed to be the moral, the most, sorry, supposed to be the modern of the Nigerian youth. Hmm. My name is George. Sorry, my name is George from Nigeria. Yeah, please go on, sir. Yeah, the leaders of Nigeria, the leaders of Nigeria today are supposed to be the um, um, good uh, role model for the Nigerian youth. But not of them can be a good role model. Hmm. So that this children, this, um, this youth, Look into foreign media for succor to look for a role model. Yes. That is why the Nigerians cannot participate in yes. the development of this country. That is one. Then two, my brother, I think deeply, deeply, deeply about democracy that we are practicing. Mm. It will never take us from anywhere. Yes. Where I read about Sankara and from Nkuruma is that Nigerian Africans should function the system of governance. Before the white man came to Africa, we have empires, we have been governed. 
we have empires and we have, you know, so we just need to look at democracy if it's part, if it will really work for us. We have mm. coup all over Africa. We have coup all over the whole world because democracy is not even really working. People don't understand the system. So yes. the whole thing is that we should really come together as a nation. Okay. Look at Okay, so usually you have a minute, uh, but I just uh, I just allowed you a little bit more time. Uh, would you like to react to that, or we can just continue our discussion on DK? It's an interesting point. I mean, uh, we can always have a bespoke kind of democracy. Yes. The important thing is that we have to have a way of producing leaders who are committed to the public good, mm. to, to solving our social economic problems. We have to have a way of of pushing out leaders who do this. Whether it's some hybrid system involving election and selection, it's not really, the form doesn't matter. I mean, you have China, you have the United States, these are yes. two terms, but in both countries, there's lots of development going on. Mm. You know, so for us, it's about finding a way of ensuring that the person that you are bringing out as local government chairman, state house of assembly member, governor, uh, senator, president, that all of them are committed to moving our country forward in a progressive way rather than executing any personal or ethnic, ethno regional agenda. Mm. For me, that's the case. All right. Um, the, the, one of the things that bothers me and I think that has held us back um, is that I was glad that when we were talking, for example, you were able to run through how you developed and all through you went to schools here in Nigeria. However... However, um, you know, uh, you might probably not want to admit, but you know that the standard of education is getting lower and lower by the day. And, and, and some of us believe it's deliberate. Um, I think that our leaders think, you know, probably suspect that the more ignorant the people are, the more they will be able to override them on their own personal agenda. But I'm an advocate of getting people, uh, you know, getting people educated and exposed uh, and so that, so that they would understand the issues and be, be able to make informed decisions as and when due. I wonder how you, how you react to that. I completely agree with you, Yoga. I, mm. I feel education is the key. And I agree that, I mean, um, I, I always say that when I, when I was going to secondary school, Yes. I go go and I went to primary school in, in Festac. Yes. When we're going to secondary school, it was the aspiration of our parents that we went to public secondary schools, to unity schools. That yes. was what everybody aspired. In fact, if you went to a private secondary school, it was probably because you couldn't get into a federal government college. Federal college, yes. But the situation is completely different today. Today, the aspiration of most people is to send their children to private schools. Now, if you go to a public school, it means that you couldn't afford to go to a private school. Yes. And that is the, the, the devastation that has uh, happened in the Nigerian public education system hmm. everywhere. And it is terrible because public education is important to nation building. Hmm. In public education, the child of the rich, the child of the poor, they meet each other. The child from the north, the child from the south, they meet each other. The Christian, the Muslim, they sleep on the same bunk bed. They sleep in the same, they, they study on the same desk. They cut the same grass. They wash the same toilet. They, and this thing helps to build empathy across ethnic, across re religious, and across class lines. That's how, you, that's how you invent a generation of patriotic nation-conscious individuals that are able to rise a bit above ethnic divisions to move the nation forward. That's how you do it with education. Mm. Without education, there is no future. So it's not a battle that you win with armored personnel carriers and bombs and guns. It's a battle you win by educating, by investing in public education. So it is, it is critical. It is central to the future of this nation. Those 13 million Almajiri roaming around the north, there is until you begin to give give access to education, access to skills development, access to capacity development. For those 13 million children out of school in the north, we are a, we have a huge problem on our hands. Whether we are in one country or, or we are in different countries, or as long as there are 13 million children out of school roaming roaming around in our neighborhood, none of us mm. can sleep well. Yes. So these are fundamental to our future, and that is why governance is key. Everybody can come and be talking about tribe and religion. But if we don't get the governance right, there will be no land for every, anybody to live on. There will be no ground for anybody to stand on. 
So I, I completely, completely agree with you. Mm. My father had eight children, and he was fortunate that he could send us all to public schools. How much did you pay in those days? Yes. To send your children to public schools. I just have four, and I'm already sweating <laughs> at the burden of, of, of paying for private education for them. And the irony is that the quality of education they're getting in these private schools that I'm paying an arm and a leg for is not any is not that much better than the quality of education I went I got in, in King's College where I went to or University of Abuja where I went to. Mm. So we are paying more for private education and we are we are losing out all the benefits that come from, from public education. You know, so mm. I agree with you, sir, that yes. education is our future. Investing in education is our future. Yeah, but the, also the, the the last caller made some small reference to the social media, and I, I I believe that the social media has been manipulated by the powers that be, you know, to brainwash a lot of our, our our people. You see, look, people must understand that information can do one source of information can do what a hundred tanks cannot even do. Um, and, and and systemically, they've been working on our minds. Most of our most of our uh, young generation would rather go to America than die to see God. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, but, but it bothers me that uh, sometimes we can't see through all this, uh, and a, a lot of us have gotten addicted, uh, uh, addicted to to what is spewed out, you know, in the social media and so on and so forth. I'd like to know your thinking on that, and if it aligns with what I'm thinking of, you might want to use it as an opportunity to, to, you know, to talk to some people that there's nothing wrong. I don't say there's anything wrong with the social media. Absolutely not. But you've got to be careful how you process information. It, it comes in very, very slowly. The first set of Pentecostal churches I remember that, that were visible in Nigeria all had, they all flew American flags way back then. Uh, and I saw it coming. And I've been proven right, but that's the story for another day. So I wonder what you what you feel about what I what I just said. I think social media is a neutral tool. It can be used for good, and for a lot bad. of good, and it can be used for a lot of bad. You know, and I, so I agree that one. In fact, I envisage that one day, one day there might, might come a time when. The, the same caution you have on on like, when you want to buy a, a packet of cigarettes, you see there that smoking causes lung cancer. Yes. I think one day you might have similar warnings with use of social media, you know, that it has certain side effects, certain negative side effects that it can have. Mm. There is a lot of also disinformation going on on social media. Yes. There is a tendency for you to think that the moment you see it on social media, then it's true. You know, but but this is not correct. It's uh, social media. Being on social media is like sitting in a in a bar or in a club and just listening to gist and thinking that everything everybody is saying is correct and well yes. researched, but it's not. So if you go on social media knowing that you know that you have to still verify, you have to still check, yes. and before you forward a piece of information, you need to verify that it is true. You know, that you can very easily damage somebody's reputation or spread a very negative rumor that has very vast, far-reaching negative consequences. Yeah. You know, simply by pressing a button on your phone. Now, we all have to become more responsible because information is very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, you know, we can misuse it. So I use, I mean, I use social media. I use the internet for a lot of research. I'm someone that reads and researches a lot, and I know how the internet has made it so much easier to carry out research on anything. Mm -hmm. But then I also know that that same internet, you can use it to assassinate people's character. You can use it to poison the minds of populations. You can use it to stir up unnecessary trouble. So it's very important that we approach social media knowing that it's a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody just you know, gives the, the hands the key of a car to their six-year-old or eight-year-old or ten-year-old and just says jump the, the Lamborghini the and speed down the road yeah yeah we all we all know that we have uh, to drive responsibly we have to drink responsibly that's mm -hmm. the same way we have to use social media responsibly it is that powerfully too you know and it can cause a lot of damage if you abuse it okay i'd like to take one or two other calls then we'll round up hello good morning oh, good evening good morning sir. morning sir who's calling from Yes, sir. Please go on, sir. 
Yes. I don't have much to say. I just want to appreciate you and your and your guest. Yes. And I don't think I don't know if it is possible for us to have this man as our next president in this country or somebody like him. Yes. This is the type of people we want in this country. Yes. And I pray that one day some something like this will happen to us. Thank okay. Okay. I, I, let me ask him, uh, DK. Do you have your eye on politics at all? Hello, DK. This is the type of politics I'm doing. I don't have aspirations. Yes. <laughs> okay, but this I I know that by conscientizing, by talking, by articulating, yes. already politics. Yes, exactly. But I don't have uh, desires for position or things like that. No, I, not really. But 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 you do find that the people you know need to be led, don't you feel that don't you have that urge to lead your people sometimes you know the people need to be led. It's, it's good to contribute like this, but they still need to be led. And like look like that gentleman I, I, like that gentleman said the gentleman who called in, one of the things that has always put me to shame and I must admit it is it's been a while that we've had a leader in this country that I look up to you know I look up to. Anytime he stands in front of a mic or whatever, and it, like like he did in the days of Zeke and Awolowo and Nkuma and Yerere, you know that those were the, the the in my own generation when we were young, we wanted to be to aspire to be like them. But Nigeria has had leaders um, uh, that have you know they've fallen short in in, in that in that regard, uh, um, and. Uh, uh, no, don't let me be sarcastic here. So let me just, <laughs> just uh, I wanted to say I wanted to drop a bomb, but I'll spare you that. But I'll spare you that. I hope that <laughs> excuse me. I hope that in 2023 uh we, we would have a leader that inspires majority of the population. I, I believe that I believe that uh, the first characteristics of a leader, now that we've gone through so much, is to have somebody who can inspire who people can look up to, okay? Whether he has a first degree in economics or he has whatever it is, once you have that charismatic leader who can move people on, you're halfway there. Do you agree with that? Completely. Yes. Completely. I yes. believe the first part of a leader is to inspire. Yes. I got to, to, I, I got to take the lines are buzzing, so let me take one or two more calls. Everybody wants to talk to you, DK. Hello, good morning. Uh, Hello. Please, uh, could you, Jimmy, please permit me. Yes. My brain is running wild. Ha. Each time I hear that Moderna. schools up north are being closed. If we have the kind of system, and before the, please, Mr. Dickey, I agree totally with you on the Unity School. Yes. I too was a product of the Unity School. Yes. And my best friends were northerners. Yes. But something keeps ringing in my head. Both in the university and both... In secondary school, they always say, well, I'm just here to fulfill all righteousness. By the time I get home, I already have a position waiting for me. Mm. And I know that most of them could not pass junior work. Even in the university, most of them had carryovers. And now, if schools are being closed, my imagination keeps running wild. No, don't let we it run wild, madam. The system we have currently, whereby <laughs> we have people who are less qualified sitting in a position of authority and making decisions over uh, uh, people, okay. they shouldn't. Okay. How do you react to that, Uncle Jimmy? Thank uh, me? Ah, no, it's Dicky that will react. Well, let me react, um, you know, let me quickly react to that since she asked me specifically to. Um, I'm hoping that this closure of schools and so on and so forth is something that will be, you know, temporary once the security situation is taken care of. I think even the northern leaders, if you go by what, uh, what's his name now, Erufai said during the week, also realize that that it, it might be easier, you, you know, to rule over people if they're educated. And I use the word rule deliberately if they're, if they're exposed and so on and so forth. And they need to play catch up. So I'm hoping that is a temporary. Thing. You don't need to don't run wild. Don't let your brain run wild. Uh, it, it, I hope and I pray that it will be sorted out. I wonder what you think, DK. Hello, have you run away? Uh, you said, uh, no, I said I was. I, I was just going to reference the same thing that Governor Elrufai said. Yes, there is that growing, growing understanding even within the north. That yes, 
You need an educated populace. You need an educated populace. An impoverished populace is a liability, a ticking Big time one. bomb, and it will take you out as well. Big one. You know, so that, uh, that understanding is growing. Okay, let me take one or two more calls and I'll let you go. Hello, good morning. Hello, Uncle Jimmy. Good morning. Morning, sir. Who's calling? You have social on the line. Yes, sir. Yeah, you see what you are saying about social media. I think it's applicable to the conventional media. Yes. The radio, the TV. Yes. What is said on the radio, people also need to uh, listen to it carefully. Yes. Because it is said in accordance with the regulation. Yes. Not necessarily about the reality. Hmm. If, if we don't believe or condemn ethnicity, is it like that in the brains of some people? Some people believe they are greater than others. Yes. And when you watch the rulership of this country, mm. you find out that when such people get into power, they wield the power as they like. Mm. They fold, they twist, they twist, they do anyhow as they like on the seat. Mm -hmm. But when those of other people from the other side are sent to the throne, they try to play by the rules. Hmm. And this ideology, in fact, if you have a different ideology, you cannot change another person's ideology. Yes. That is where the problem is. Okay, sir. We got to go. We got to go. We, you allowed one minute. And, and on that parable, on the note of that parable, when I, I'm sure everybody understands where it is, these people come and those people go. It's the story of Nigeria, DK. DK, you, will, you promise us that you are going to be back yes, with sir. us. Yes, we'll be calling you from time to time. I find you very inspiring. I'm absolutely proud of you. Um, I, I, I'm glad to have you as a friend. Don't play with this boy again. Let him uh, go. <laughs> I go, go. <laughs> but I, I, like, I like to thank Agogo for arranging this. It's very sweet of him. So this is where we, we draw the curtains um, this morning. Uh, I've been speaking to Mr. D.K. Chukumerije, who, of course, by his surname, uh, you already know his origins. Uh, he's a lawyer and he's a poet. And he has wowed everybody uh, this morning. If I want to break the records, I'd just say I'm bringing him back next week. And everybody will be rushing to listen to him. It's been a delight talking to this gentleman. And I, I wish him all the best. I wish Nigeria to all the best. Uh, like I said this morning, this, uh, I do miss uh, Uncle Jide Shomadi. You know, I miss, <coughs> excuse me, I miss him so, so much. Uh, he would have called me this morning on my way home. Uh, but he's gone. And may his gentle soul rest in peace. Please, 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 get yourself vaccinated. Get yourself vaccinated. COVID is real and vaccination is the only... I was having an argument with somebody yesterday and uh, she was telling me, eh, the fact that you have you are vaccinated doesn't mean you won't catch COVID. No, you will, but, but it, would, you know, it would be milder. It will be milder. And I don't know why people are listening to this. Just, we just were talking about the social media, this dangerous information that is deliberately put out for people who, who of course, have the desire to die. Me and I don't want to die yet. I'd like to thank you very much, Agor, for two things, bringing DK and also for, of course, being at the control of Miguel. Don't answer. Just <laughs> I'll be back again. And I also like, Philip, don't go behind the pillar. I'd like to thank Philip, Philip as usual. Is, 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 is here. I'll be back again on Tuesday, God willing. 7 o'clock with uh, Kekiri. Uh, <laughs> 7 o'clock with Kekiri Sheriff. I love that guy. <laughs> 7 o'clock. And then, of course, 9 o'clock with Daily Digest that will take through the week. And, of course, Wednesday, you know, would also be Dear Bumi Day. Thank you very much, all of you. Osa, happy birthday. Keep that champagne cold till we come drink it in your house later in the evening. I'll see you all on Tuesday. Bye. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's